Of these, six are confirmed and none are refuted. So these guys are saying that these studies are proving that their theory that our brain activity comes from lower level quantum stuff is on track with what science is presenting in the studies. Okay, and so what does that mean to us as spiritual seekers or seekers of truth or seekers of inner peace? Okay, so this is episode 120, and it is a special episode because it has a special press release of some scientific fact that is right along the lines of understanding spirituality and our existence on this planet and how all of this stuff in our head comes to be. Stand by. Go! Hey, welcome to the I Am Podcast, where we answer all the questions about spirituality and inner peace that you ever wanted to ask. I'm your host, Sean Webb. First off, I want to thank the folks in the UK who have written such positive reviews for my book, How Emotions Work in Humans and Computers. If you go look on audible.com, which by the way, you can get my book for free if you haven't signed up there yet. Um, they give you a, a book for free by using our link, audibletrial.com slash I Am Spirituality. If you go to Audible and you read those reviews, freaking awesome. They're better than I could have ever expected. And thank you so much for taking the time to write a review for the book itself. Um, the book on Amazon, not doing so well because it got one psych PhD upset who said it was a whole bunch of gobbledygook. And even though the world's leading specialists in emotions and emotions research with PhDs next to their name at the highest institution say, holy shit, this is awesome stuff. This one person gave it a one-star review. The only other person gave it a five-star review. So now three is the average and no one is buying the book because they're just assuming that it sucks. And it may suck, who knows? But if you've enjoyed it, go back and write a review for it for me, please. Or, you know, I'm not saying give me a great review, just be truthful. If it sucks, I want to know it sucks. Um, I think it's going to be less of a book than the next book that's coming out. That one's going to be good. That one's going to be the one that I want everyone to read because that one's going to increase levels of inner peace and give you the keys to be able to take control of your emotional landscape, which is really cool. Um, but, uh, thank you to the guys who have reviewed the book and written a review because they were, they were great. I'm, I'm humbled by them. Uh, and I appreciate that. So thanks to you. Thanks to those who have also contributed to the website. Really appreciate that. You can buy me lunch, buy me a lunch with beer, um, sponsor an episode of the podcast, whatever you want to do. Really appreciate that. It helps to fray some of the costs. Okay. So this episode, getting to the meat of the subject today, um, I wanted to read to you an article or portion of an article that I put out on the website. And if you want to read all of it, you can go to iamspirituality.com, check that out. It's titled science colon consciousness may be non-local. Um, and it is right in our wheelhouse of what we've been talking about recently regarding the scientific basis of our consciousness, our thoughts, and potentially the spiritual existence that we perceive as spiritual that goes beyond mind and body. Um, so let me read you a little bit of this. I won't read you all of it. If you want to read all of it, go to the website. Let me wax crazy for a second. It was three or so years ago when I published on the podcast that my enlightenment experience over 10 years ago had revealed to me that all consciousness was non-local and that the intelligence that makes up all life and matter in the universe was created at the very fundamental quantum level, working upward from there thus creating the complex systems of life as we know it. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't the first to realize this, of course. Every enlightened being from before Buddha and forward has known this simple fact, even if we lack the scientific language to be able to explain it. And references there would be uh, to the Buddhist and Zen teachings that all is emptiness. And, uh, you know, of course, scientific knowledge tells us that even though I can knock on this desk and make noises in the microphone, I'm sure, there's absolutely nothing there. I mean, if you, if you zoom down to the lowest, smallest particle level and you had a camera and you flew through an atom, you would see absolutely nothing. There's absolutely nothing there besides energy that creates all the stuff around us. And so everything seems to be um, existing in the world. But as, uh, was it uh, Emerson that said, uh, everything is but thickened light? 
the entire world is but thickened light. Anyway, um, we know reality is that there really is nothing here and that everything is created from the bottom up. And all the ancient masters knew this because the ancient masters passed through the enlightenment experience. And so continuing with the article, folks who have passed through the full on enlightenment experience know that the intelligence of the universe, the energy that gives us humans and all life forms, life and consciousness, the thing that some people call God, that actually exists down below the smallest known particles and constantly creates present tense, the earth and the universe as we know it, tying us all together through a field of intelligence that may someday be scientifically quantifiable, but presently isn't. And so this doesn't say that God doesn't exist. It just says that, you know, maybe God isn't the guy sitting on the throne somewhere with a white beard. And when we point up, um, we're actually pointing down from the Australian point of view. Where else could God be? But down at the finest level of everything, creating everything constantly, right? So, yeah, it sounds crazy, except for the fact that science just got a huge step closer to proving just that. This from Science Daily, a website dedicated to prominent science news. Now, I cut and paste some of the article from Science News, but basically... Um, I'll read you a couple paragraphs. A review and update of a controversial 20-year-old theory of consciousness published in Physics of Life Review claims that consciousness derives from a deeper level, finer scale activity inside brain neurons. The recent discovery of quantum vibrations in microtubules inside the brain neurons corroborates this theory, according to review authors Stuart Hammerhoff and Sir Roger Penrose. They suggest that EEG rhythms, brain waves, also derived from deeper level microtubule vibrations. Okay, so let's stop there for a second. We have these neurons in our head, and it's pretty well accepted science that these neurons help create our thoughts and our feelings and emotions and yada, yada, yada. Well, what's now being proven is that microtubules, the lattice of things that come together to create our neurons, microtubules are affected by quantum action. And this is proven through scientific study. And they have a bunch of references here about uh, how they've proven that microtubules not only influence the brain, but also microtubules are influenced by quantum activity. And there's even a reference in here that um, anesthesia shuts down microtubules, which is why our brain shuts down our memory and our activities, and we can't remember anything when we're under anesthesia. So... Um, Basically, after 20 years of skeptical criticism, the evidence now clearly supports that their theory is uh, valid, uh, and that re rebuts critics, and reviews of 20 testable predictions of OR published in 1998, which is their theory, of these six are confirmed and none are refuted. So these guys are saying that these studies are proving that their theory, that our brain activity comes from lower level quantum stuff is on track with what science is presenting in the studies. Okay, and so what does that mean to us as spiritual seekers or seekers of truth or seekers of inner peace? Well, there were two camps previously. One was in the Newtonian physics world who said consciousness and thoughts and everything exist on a local level and they interact with each other on an atomic level and nothing outside of us or outside of our skin can interfere or interact with what's going on in our brain and as soon as our body dies, we're done. We're gone. There is no more. Now, science is suggesting that people in the other camp might be actually more accurate in their guesses about what's going on with us and our spirituality in that the people outside the Newtonian physics camp say, well, consciousness could be non-local. Consciousness could be connected with all other things in the universe and all other energies and yada, yada, yada. And so what this science is now proving or suggesting is that, yes, our brain is influenced by quantum activity. And quantum activity then brings with it, and I'll read this next paragraph. Um, okay, so let the skeptics who have refuted the quantum involvement in consciousness start shitting themselves. Science has now stepped to the plate to prove one of these crazy theories about microtubules um, 
indeed interacting with quantum energy, and they do affect higher structures in associated that are associated with them to include our own neuronal activity and thus our own consciousness. So now the people in the other camp have said, well, no, consciousness is universal and we're connected with everything and positive energy and positive thoughts can influence the entire world, the entire universe. Well, guess what? They may be right, scientifically speaking. There may be an, a, an explanation that says, yes, because quantum activity works both ways and you're being influenced by quantum activity in your microtubules of your neurons, the activity of your neurons can then also increase or influence your microtubules and thus influence other things that are connected through quantum activity. Because if you remember, um, the cool thing about this discovery is that it ties to consciousness a lot of informational baggage regarding how quantum physics transcends the linear time barriers, the locality of energy exchange barriers, and even the quantum entanglement phenomenon, the phenomenon where one particle can be entangled with another particle to uh, over infinite distances while still having a cause and effect relationship over each other. Um, quantum entanglement, I talked to the guy who actually proved quantum entanglement for the world a couple of weeks ago in San Francisco at the Berkeley Yacht Club. He was awesome. I recorded it. The background noise was horrible, so I don't think I'm going to be able to put it on a podcast, but it was an amazing discussion how he proved quantum entanglement for the world. He already won the Wolf Prize in physics, he's up for the Nobel. Brilliant man, brilliant man. We had an awesome discussion. But basically, quantum entanglement is where two different particles can go be separated by infinite distances and still interact with each other instantaneously over infinite distances. And so now think of the implications of the science that is proving microtubules are in your neurons and microtubules are affected by quantum activity. So now we're talking about the potential for consciousness and your brain activity being influenced by things that are non-local, things that are outside of your skin, things that may be going on in other people's heads, things that may be going on in the universe that we don't even understand yet. How awesome cool is that? Because here's the where the ancient idea of spirituality ties in with the brand new discoveries of science as of yesterday. The ancient discoveries of science were that we all are one. And that's the experience that a lot of us have in our awakening, is that we all are one and part of this same universe. We're all connected. We're all part of the same huge organism, organism that goes off into infinity. Well, that perception could very well be rooted in very solid science because the reality is, after 13 point some odd billion years, we could be entangled with a number of things across the universe. The fact is that we couldn't even be here unless stars died. We are the stuff that stars spit out when they end their life. Uh, the stuff that makes up our bodies is the matter of celestial bodies that used to be. And without those having passed through their process, we couldn't be here. And so imagine the potential for the quantum activity in our bodies, in our brains, in our communities to be connected with everything all over the universe. Because now it's just not woo-woo, wishful thinking science. Now it's holy shit, there it is on black and white. We've proven a portion of this. So I wanted to bring that to your attention because a good lesson from this article is that we don't know everything. We don't know how our actions may be influencing others. And we don't know how our brain run amok, our emotions run amok and going crazy might be affecting not just ourselves, our own inner peace, but that of the world, that of the universe. Who knows? And I know the materialists who might be listening to this are like, oh boy, this guy's just friggin' crazy. You look at, listen to this woo-woo idiot. Guess what? Well, science is now proving that we are indeed influenced by quantum activity in our brains. And so now a portion of your Newtonian physics 
is being altered by the spooky actions at a distance, as Albert Einstein would call them. So, anyway, I thought I'd bring that to your attention because it's a really cool discovery that is on the path of following where the evidence leads. But it also is tying right back into the ancient teachings of the enlightened masters who say, all is emptiness, we are one with everything, all energy is connected, we're all intertwined together and reacting to each other, and that's really cool stuff to think about. And we can live our lives like that. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great week. I hope things are well for you. Don't forget, um, you can make a contribution to the website, or you can check out my book, which now has some great reviews on audible.com. Go to our link, audibletrial.com slash I am spirituality. I really appreciate you guys. Love you. Talk to you soon. Peace.